video is about the muscles of the upper limb. We're going to start off on our large model here and then we're going to bring the smaller model in so you can see how it looks on the smaller model also. So the first muscle we're going to talk about is the deltoid and we can see the deltoid here. It originates from the spine of the scapula, the acromion process and the distal portion of the clavicle and it inserts on the deltoid tuberosity on the humerus and its prime action is to abduct the arm. It's also synergistic in flexion and extension. So if we remove the deltoid, we can see our rotator cuff muscles and we have four rotator cuff muscles. Above the spine of the scapula, we have the supraspinatus and below the spine of the scapula, we have the infraspinatus. From the lateral border of the scapula, we have the teres minor, and all of these muscles insert on the greater tubercle of the humerus. If we turn the arm over, we can see here, we have the subscapularis, and the subscapularis inserts on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So now we're going to look at the muscles on the anterior compartment of the arm. The first muscle is the most famous muscle of them all, which is the biceps brachii. And the biceps brachii has two heads. It has a short head, which originates from the coracoid process, and a long head, which originates from the supraglenoidal tubercle. On this model here, we can see the long head of the biceps brachii and the short head. The short head originating on the coracoid process and the long head originating on the supraglenoidal tubercle. Those heads merge and they insert on the radial tuberosity on the radius. And we can see them going down to their point of insertion on this model. Underneath the biceps, we have the strongest flexor, and this is the brachialis. It originates on the anterior humerus and it inserts on the coronoid process. And on our little man, we can see that this is the brachialis here. Another muscle that deserves a brief mention is the coracobrachialis. This muscle originates on the coracoid process and inserts on the humerus. If we go to our little model here, we can see the coracobrachialis right here. So now we're going to look at the anterior compartment of the forearm. And all of these muscles originate from the medial epicondyle and they insert in various places. So this first muscle here is the pronator teres. And this muscle is used in pronation. If we look over here, we can see our pronator teres right here. Now the remainder of these muscles are the, all of the flexors. So the muscle that is in the middle here that has the long tendon that goes over the flexor retinaculum is the palmaris longus. On this model here, we can see the palmaris longus right here. To the thumb side of the palmaris longus, we have this muscle, which is the flexor carpe radialis. On our little model here, we can see we have the flexor carpe radialis. On the little finger side, we have the flexor carpe ulnaris. And that can be seen on this model here. Beneath the palmaris longus, we have this muscle here, which is the flexor digitorum superficialis. And on our little model here, it is this muscle that is under our palmaris longus. 
Now we're going to look at the posterior compartment of the arm. So the posterior compartment of the arm, we have the triceps, and triceps has three heads. There is a long head, a lateral head, and a medial head. And they all insert into the olecranon process on the ulna. And this is the prime mover for extension. This is our triceps here, inserting on the olecranon process of the ulna. So that brings us to the posterior compartment of the forearm. All of these muscles originate from the lateral epicondyle and then they insert on various places. So the first muscle we're going to look at is this muscle here, which is the brachioradialis. And the brachioradialis inserts on the radius as in, as, and is a weak flexor of the arm. Next to that, we have the extensor carpe radialis longus. So this muscle extends the wrist and on this model here we can see that this is the extensor carpe radialis longus. Right next to that we have the extensor carpe radialis brevis. So this is the same muscle but a little bit shorter. So this is the extensor carpe radialis brevis. Right next to that, we have the extension digitorum, which is right here. And on this model here, this is our extensor digitorum. And then the next muscle over, which is this muscle here, is the extensor carpe ulnaris. And on our little model here. This is the extensor carpe ulnaris. Oh,